Hey, this is Chuck Marshall with Medawani, and I'm talking to Rob Cavistani from Death Angel. Rob, how are you doing, man? I'm great. How are you, Chuck? <laughs> I'm doing really good, man. I, I, I want to start out by uh, letting you know that your work has been a source of inspiration and enjoyment for me ever since I got the first Ultraviolet, uh, Ultraviolet uh, record back in, gosh, I can't even remember what it was. And then I uh, got to see you guys on the Act 3 tour with Forbidden in Detroit like many moons ago. So I just wanted to let you know, man, that's your music has, has, and the live shows from the band have really been a source of a lot of great memories for me. So I wanted to thank you. Oh, thank you for those words. It feels good to hear. I'm, gl I'm glad we were some inspiration through music. Thanks, man. So uh, I also want to thank you for the new Death Angel album called Humanicide, which comes out on May 31st on Nuclear Blast. The opening track, Humanicide, is scorching. Uh, not only that blunt force trauma of the delivery of those riffs, but that dark message about the end of humanity. Um, I'm wondering, do you guys actually think that we are approaching like a collapse of society? Nah. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I mean, hopefully not, but, you know, there are a lot of clues out there that it's heading in that direction. The, the writing's on the wall. Right. You know, thrash music, like a lot of metal, tends to include thoughtful perspectives on humanity and the world we inhabit. Would you say that the music, like ultimately on Humanicide, has a optimistic viewpoint? Um, part of it, part of it does, but part of it is definitely pointing out the, um, you know, the fucked up situation, right? And in not so optimistic way, um, but it's just more of a truthful and kind of in your face reality kind of you know to slap some awakening into some people perhaps yeah but you know th there are definitely optimist optimistic outlooks you know in various songs sprinkled throughout the album there's different perspectives on the situation going on in there there's um there's so much to love about humanicide but i want to start with the guitars um they just have so much aggression and that the tone quality of those just makes me, you know, you want to just clench your fist and kind of make that metal grimacing face, you know? Yes, um, <laughs> I make <it> right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when you guys were uh, recording the album, did you guys set out with a goal to try to make it even heavier than the Evil Divide? Um, I mean, some of the songs, some of the songs are, and you know, they're they're deliberately as aggressive and and heavy as we could make music out of um but on other aspect other songs aren't necessarily set out with that goal um we kind of more so the goal was musically um stylistically was to have a, a lot of variety in there like a lot a lot a lot uh, more of a varied musical scape um but in in doing so we ended up with some extremely extremely heavy songs on the record yeah and mark's uh vocals on this uh album are just outrageous man he sounds like he's genuinely pissed off on divine defector and then he you know he's got that kind of glowing power metal um melody going like on immortal behated and um revelation song so when he was you know when he got done cutting those vocals were you guys just all like standing in this in the studio with your mouths open going what the hell um, kind of. <laughs> it, it was somewhat of that reaction. Yeah. Um, by the by, the way, you're making Mark smile very much right now. As he heard what you just said. <laughs> um, Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. but um, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's it, at some part of it. I'm standing. I'm standing there with my mouth gaping open. I guess, but in, in uh, mostly. Mostly, actually, what's happening in that moment is I'm I'm actually so overcome with with emotion for how how stoked I am of how fucking killer it's sounding that I, I usually just end up getting choked up. <laughs> I'm getting choked up and giving Mark a big hug. <laughs> that's awesome. As, as I'm happy to say that's happened on uh, multiple occasions. Um, so yeah, definitely fucking incredible uh, vocal delivery and fucking. Awesome! I'm so stoked, and yes, especially hear, hearing it for the first time at points when I when I hear 
you know what he recorded on the actual album it's uh it's quite a an exceptional experience and it's it's rare because it only happens on that one first moment when you very first hear it so it's it's a unique and incredible experience yeah and so i was wondering like since you guys have been like a single unit for the last 10 years um do you think that that um is giving the band more confidence so that because it seems like with each release there's um like everybody's just playing to their top of their abilities and sounding so good together. And on this album, that all like coalesces into just, it makes a fantastic album. Um, So I'm wondering, do you think it's because you guys have been together 10 years working together that that's kind of finally gelled together really well? Yes, absolutely. That's, that's exactly what's happening. Every, every, Every album is like another three years or so later that we've been touring, playing so many shows, living together on the bus and, backstage and just everywhere and ex- experiencing you know the world together and everything that happens is, definitely brings you closer as people and then as as musicians and the, the more we get used to each other's style and how we play and even though it's it's 10 years long you're still you're still getting more and more used to each other every right. all the time right. and so yeah that 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 came out in the uh, the performances on this record definitely you could definitely hear everybody's um, individual playing standing out, and like you said, you know, pushing to the to the limits of our abilities, um, and then collectively, I guess we just gel that way. Yeah, it it does sound fantastic, man. You guys stuck with the same uh, recording like kind of formula from the last three albums again, working with uh, Jason Sukoff, who's done a great job in producing. Um, I was wondering, did you ever, like, was there any thoughts from you or anybody else in the band about perhaps maybe changing things up either in, like, song-building approach or recording tactics? Um, well, well speak, you speak of the birthday boy. <laughs> uh, Jason's birthday today. Awesome. Yeah, and uh, so I'm going to give him the most props as possible because <laughs> he deserves it. Um, but, I mean, s- some things some aspects of it change i mean from one album to to the other of course um we i mean were you asking if we were thinking of of change like as is in using a different producer or going to a different studio or just like the elements within yeah so like basically any of that so like different producer different studio or um you know the the kind of the methodology that you guys use to put together songs and and craft them um, well, as far as the, the the team, the production team, and the studio and all that, um, I don't know. It was just we just somehow we just completely assumed that we were going to do this next record together. I mean, it, probably because we were very happy with the way the last three turned out. Yeah, and you know, we just wanted more of that, but with our newer songs, and see if we can take it to the next level between you know the same people in the same place right which is um what i feel that we actually did accomplish so i'm really happy about that um but yeah we weren't really trying to 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 change it up to change up the personnel or the studio that was not in our in our thought pattern for this album um as far as the the procedure of, of like the songwriting and the whole the whole entire process again is kind of in a bit of a formula which has been working well for the last couple albums um but um there's you know slight differences just because of your circumstances surrounding that time period and yeah you know, how you're feeling and what's going on in your in your personal life and all that stuff um you know then there's of course like there's different equipment that we're using so you know this is going to affect the tones and stuff so we'll it'll give it a, a difference mm-hmm. from the other albums we're using you know i'm playing different guitars we got a different drum set you know different different amps just a lot of different gear yeah. um as including some of the recording equipment's different microphones preamps so all these little details are gonna make a sonic difference for sure um so that's kind of that was like that was sort of the goal so those elements and with the different mindset and the different compositions that's going to make enough of a, of a 
difference from the other albums, you know, but while retaining the, the parts that we like about the other albums. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of essence of Death Angel. Totally. And the, the, the kind of the, the sound we get when we do these records with Jason is like, I just love the, the punch and the clarity, the clarity. Yeah. Um, you really hear the, the separation of the instruments well, but yet we, you know, they, we slam all the sounds together nice and hot to where that to, to me is like really just his production just is very clear and punchy and crisp. So uh, with his kind of uh, modern style of production and then our kind of old school vibe, when we, <laughs> we combine, we, we kind of get like our unique sound. Yeah, that's awesome. So I was wondering if you can tell me a little bit about the bonus track, uh, The Day I Walked Away. It, it's definitely a change up from the rest of the album. And it's got a, like a really cool kind of progressive rock character. Yeah, that song's that's that's definitely on the far far end of the envelope pushing uh, action that we're trying to get yeah. with that with some of our songs. Um, and um, yeah, I mean that of all things. Now that I think about it, I think that is the that's actually the first. It is the first. It's the first uh, musical like instrumentally is the first song that I put together writing this album, really? like put the song together. So I, I, I do remember hearing it. I, 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 I was kind of using that song to just kind of break in the songwriting for the new album, like, you know, just to get warmed up in like writing a song. And I wasn't really sure where it was going to go. Exactly. I wanted yeah. to just start recording something and assembling something to get, get it rolling. And it ended up turning into something pretty cool. It was definitely different from, you know, it's not really a thrash, no. you know, uh-uh. thrash attack. It's much more, I don't know, it's got this total different mood going on, obviously. Um, but I like it. I mean, we I mean, we have even, I have, I have other stuff that I have written that's even way, even beyond that. <laughs> not not in, the, in the normal realm that you'd expect from us, but I think that's probably you know reaching the edge of of how far we might want to go yeah. while you know keeping it to be a metal record here so right. you know but it definitely gets it enables us to get you know different moods out yeah for sure i mean it's uh, uh at one point i thought like it sounded like a little bit like old like really old queen's um but uh yeah it's really cool yeah it's kind of, i mean yes yeah, it's, it's it's a bit progressive yeah yeah you know so definitely dig dig that style. Um, it's not our usual style, but you know, get some of that in there. It's it's a cool song. Yeah, why not? Uh, so you guys are going to be hitting the road shortly um, with uh, the legendary Overkill, who has they also have a killer new album out. Um, Death Angel's done a lot of uh, supporting of other acts. Do you see you guys going out and headlining for Humanicide? Yes. It's been a while since we did a proper headlining tour, so it's in the works. Awesome. I mean, yeah, it's not, it's in the works, put it that way. <laughs> All right, cool. Because uh, I know you guys are going to be across the United States. I think you're coming in my area, Detroit, like end of this month, uh, 30th. Yeah. Yep. The, I mean, the, uh, on the front end and the back end of that tour with Overkill, we do have headlining shows. There's like a dozen or so headlining shows of ours, but the, the ones on the east side are, are the ones with overkill um but and in this summer when we go out to europe um we head out there at the end of may right when the album is released yeah and we have a a handful of headlining shows out there as well so it's not like really a headline tour per se but there's a lot of headline shows inside of these tours um but after these tours like you know the the we're, we're pretty much booked through august um and meanwhile we're we're booking for the future beyond that, you know, for till the end of the year and also through next year. So there's plenty of time. Um, and I'm sure we're going to be doing a lot more touring and mm-hmm. I'm sure there's going to be headlining touring happening inside of that. Yeah. That would be awesome. Cause you know, just to get a little bit more death angel time on stage. <laughs> hey, where you're coming from. And, <laughs> yeah. I'm able to play more, more of the songs from Humana side, because of course, when you, when you have a 45 minute support slot, you can't really, get all crazy with too many new songs in that amount of time with nine albums that we want to, you know, touch songs off all the other albums too and stuff. Yeah. So 
when we get to headline, then that's when we'll bring in more of the new stuff, which we're very excited to play. Awesome. So uh, speaking of thrash bands and albums, I was just curious, what is uh, what are your top five thrash albums of all time? Mm. Oh, top five thrash albums of all time. All time. All right. Well, in no particular order. Yeah. So I'm going to call them out. But let's let's say you have to have Bonded by Blood. Nice. You have got to have Ride the Lightning. Um. I'm gonna put rain in blood. Nice in there. Mm. Geese. Mm. And five. Uh, I want to say one of our albums. <laughs> 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 yeah, hey, what, man. yeah. What is your favorite album, the Death Angel? I mean, well, besides the new if, one. If we're gonna be, if it's gonna be in this list, I'm gonna put Ultraviolence in there. Nice. Because yeah. it's pure thrash. It is. Our debut album, you know, it's kind of, it's, it is what it is. You can't, right. you, you can't <laughs> mess with that album. So there you go. <laughs> awesome. So uh, I'm pretty sure that you're like kind of a, a big fan of Kiss and Slayer. Well, obviously you mentioned Slayer, but, um, and they're, they're going out and they're doing their farewell, their farewell tours. Um, do you, do you really think that you'll, that they'll, they won't do any more live shows or, or do you think that they'll want to get back on the road at some point? Um, I think they'll want to get back on the road at some point. I don't, I don't know if they will actually do it. Right. But, but at least some of the people in the band will. So I, I'm sure some of the people in the band want to immediately. <laughs> but you know, it's it takes it takes everybody to tango. So you got to see if it's a reality or not with Kiss. I I mean, I don't I don't believe anything they say. <laughs> they, they, you know, they come back and come back and come back. They'll right. they'll come back without a single original member and still be able to sell out shows. <laughs> they will, but um, Slayer that might be a different story. You know, yeah, they don't have the makeup and all that stuff going on. You know, their music's a bit more intense to play at right. an older age. Right. So you know, we'll have to see what happens there. But you know. I'm bummed that they're going to be ending. Yeah. But, you know, all good things come to an end. That's true. That's true. So, uh, Rob, I just got one last question for you. Um, and it's, uh, what is your favorite uh, breakfast food? Oh, oatmeal with a banana. All right. And my cup of coffee. Yeah. All right. Cool, man. I got started like that or else I won't be able to function. I can't eat big breakfast anymore. I'll be zombied out. (laughs) Oh, <laughs> all right, cool. Well, Rob, I appreciate your time and thank you again so much for the music and for uh, you know talking with me today. Oh, it's my pleasure, Chuck. All right, fine. Thank you very much. Yeah, man.